Here comes Santa Claus. Here comes Santa Claus. Right down Santa Claus Lane. La la la. <laughs> Y'all tell I love her singing. Listen, we would say it's the Eagle Talk holiday edition, but it's not. It just happens to be that we're recording this during a holiday. We are. We are. We're in the last month of the year, y'all. I hope y'all time blocked and that everything we've been saying for the last couple of episodes because it's uh, showtime. It's go time. But y'all, welcome to Eagle Talk with Team Lewis, episode number 86. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, we, we are trucking along to 100. We are. What are we gonna do when we get to 100? Party, man. Party. It's a party. It's a party. Hey, it's a party. Hey. <laughs> okay, so we always talk about check ins, but I thought it would be cool if you just shared or if we shared what's one of like the best Christmas gifts that you've ever received? Um, I don't know, but let's fast forward to my 44 year old self. <laughs> and it would be a Rolex, Rose Gold, Sky Dweller, Champagne Dab. No, actually, I actually want the Sunburst down with a. We got an alligator strap that just came out. Mm. Brown. You can either get it from Howard from Jewelers, who I've been with a long time. Or you we say you, you, me? Yeah. Oh. This is a gift for me, right? I, I asked what you had got, not what you want. Oh, no, this is what I want. Yeah, that, well, God bless. Howard from Jewelers in Chicago, fast off. Why bash from Shop with him for 20 years? Or my new connection, which is right down the street in your backyard Aww. in Frisco, Texas, Mark Samuels, owned by a friend of mine by the name of Mirage. Oh, yeah. Well, honey, I just want to remind you that we have decided that we were going to give instead of receive this year. But God bless. God bless. I did a whole commercial. And I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you, what what was your favorite gift? Um, What was my favorite Christmas gift? I feel like one that sticks out to me was the Easy Bake Oven. Oh, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> which ironically i'm not a baker to this day right but there was a time where like the easy bake oven was like all that in a bag of chips and i remember getting that because my mother was the type full disclosure like when i especially when i got to a certain age she was like i give to you all year i'm not about to like oh, yeah. stress myself out for christmas but that was one year that i remember what i wanted was under the te- the um the tree the tree and it was an easy bake oven. And I don't think like even those little packets like brownies, like I probably used it like one or two times and never use it again. But I was happy that one day. You know, I just I just thought about something. If I did have to give a, a real answer on something that I got, I think one year I got some Reebok pumps. Oh uh, that was a dope gift. Reebok pumps, they were they were off the chain. Yeah. And I got in trouble because we kept pumping them up trying to make the elbows explode. And your and your brother exploded his, right? Yeah, you know how that goes. Yeah. Well, no, that's cool. So, y'all, what we are talking about today on episode 86, but we're going to do a little bit of a twist Mm -hmm. because, yes, we are deep in December. We are in the full swing of the holidays. However, um, we wanted to give y'all a spin on how we approached goal setting and how we are approaching it this year um, and something that we did a couple months ago that was truly helpful. So full transparency, I think that you and I both, for the first time in a long time, did not quite hit our numbers this year. No, we didn't, man. Um, it's interesting because, in my opinion, it wasn't our fault. Mm-hmm. My opinion. I mean, um, yeah, no. I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, we can't control the interest rates. Uh, so rates changed. Uh, mid, well, I think there were four rate hikes so far this year. Probably five by the time you guys are listening to this. Um, and I just that just shifted some stuff in my business for sure because I was buying, renovating. Um, putting a tenant in there and just refinancing out of it. But on my refinance, my interest rates went from like four and a half to like seven and a half, eight percent. Which so, changed. Yeah, that strategy yeah. just didn't make sense. Yeah. Um, I got lucky on the Dallas house, which I made an Airbnb and that's cash flowing great. But I, um, in the third quarter, I just decided really to stop personally buying. I think about mm-hmm. one or two that we kept. Um, but I stopped buying as heavy and just started um, wholesaling them out to my investors. Yeah. So. so for you, when we say didn't hit your numbers, you had a number that you wanted to reach in terms of um, income producing rental properties, yep. key term being income producing, right? right. And since the um, the market just showed a little bit more volatility on the investment side, you know, at one point everything was so sky, you know, it was such a bidding war and it just didn't make sense then when the interest rates got higher to continue to buy at that number. Yeah, and that's fine. I mean, you, you just got to, We've been here before, yeah, right? So, I mean, absolutely. the market is not crashing. People are still buying. Um, what I learned is I have to, I had to start negotiating a little bit harder on the front end. Yes. Because my buyers want the properties as a, as a discount. Yeah. The, the, the market is not the same and people are not paying as they were 90 days ago. So, if I knew that up front, 
uh, I would go in for, you know, $10,000 reduction or to get it $10,000 cheaper in the beginning. So when I did sell it, it still makes sense for my end buyer. Right. And, and I think that overall too, we both are in real estate. Um, it's about educating our clients, but also a lot like this is a time where folks are being a little bit more conservative, even though this market is completely different, like from 2008, that is the closest thing that a lot of people have to compare it to. Yeah. So we've experienced a little hesitancy. Um, and then on my end, y'all, um, <laughs> what had happened to me is really life happened, right? Yeah. Like there have been a great amount of, I spent a good amount of time this year where I literally took off. Like I can think of chunks, weeks, months at a time that I needed to take off for grief and things like that. Um, and whereas I hit, like I had two numbers, right? I had like a, this, like, this is the least we need to do number, right? This will be satisfactory. And I, and I told myself, like, I'm going to be happy if I hit those numbers. And then I have my stretch goal. So didn't get to the stretch goal, but hit the satisfactory numbers, which you would think I would be happy about that, which I am. But there is definitely um, some strategizing for next year. But let us tell you what we did, because everything isn't about numbers, right? Right. So a couple months ago, we shared with you, Corey and I decided that we were going to take a trip and we do a, go a, a dream retreat every year, but we approach it a different way. Do you want to tell people like what we normally, what our dream retreat looks like? Yeah. And then we'll talk about how we changed it this year. Well, normally we, it's in between um, Christmas and New Year's Eve. Yeah. Well, we would just just go somewhere, get a room, go to dinner, come back and literally take about four or five, six hours and, and just plan what we want the next year to look like. Sticky notes all over the place, writing in different color markers, um, kind of brainstorming, scratching stuff out, adding stuff. It's pretty cool, actually, when you think about it. But again, we noticed a shift in the summer. Yeah. Uh, so third quarter, it was you, not me, that decided to let's do it earlier mm -hmm. um, and not wait till the end because, A, we had so much stuff going on um and b it just made sense yes you know, it, it wasn't the end of the year would not give us enough time to figure out what we wanted 2023 to look like yeah and while our dream retreat has been um good for us previously it needed to evolve it was yeah. time for it to evolve and um you know it was like a fast and furious fun night like we we, we normally would go on a date you know eat go back to a hotel do the whole thing hang out some more and then come back home and do vision boards but this time it was the 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 challenge with doing it that way is on december 30th the year was over yeah right the year was over and there wasn't much room to course correct if we needed to course correct anything for the current year so this time we decided to go away for two nights mm -hmm. Um, and we went to Broken Bow. Mm -hmm. We went to, a, and, and for those of you who aren't familiar, Broken Bow is kind of like a camp. Not, I, I don't know if we would say camp, but kind of like mm -hmm. cabins and it's in Oklahoma. Um, it, it wasn't just your regular old hotel, right? right? But it definitely, like we got a chance to be in nature and it was completely different from our environment. So, and, and because we were there, an extended amount of time instead of just like a four hour window we had about 48 hours we got to really take our time with the process yeah i think um actually i'm really glad we did it that way when i say that way i'm saying that location yeah because it's you know we could have went downtown dallas right yeah um but where we chose was somewhere where we can actually get out and, and hear water mm -hmm. get out and and walk on the trails um be we able could to think yeah be able to sit on on the uh what is the back of the, the, the patio. patio area, yeah. right? And really just talk, turn on some music, turn off some music. Um, be able to, uh, I guess, just be one with nature, if, if you want to put it that way. And then we had an open space on the, on the first floor to where you were able to kind of sit on the floor. You had plenty of space. You had these big poster things that you put on the walls. And we normally do that, but they're normally small, sticky, yeah. sticky notes. Um, so I'm, I'm glad we did it that way because uh we, we weren't we were away from people we were away from people and we weren't rushed yeah so let me tell y'all um what we did so we were there two nights and the first night was really the night where we just got our juices flowing okay right. um so what we did was we asked ourselves 
three questions. Mm -hmm. um, the first question was, okay, and, I, and we did it like the beginning of October. So it was like, okay, pretend that it is January 1st, 2023. So about three months left in the year. Pretend that you are at the New Year's Day. What are you, what do you want to be most proud of that you accomplished? And I really like that question because this is what it challenged us. It challenged us to look at, okay, what are we most proud of that has already happened? Because right. there were some things that happened already. Like we started this podcast, um, YouTube channel, and I wrote a book and I started a team and you started your team. So there were different things that we could look at and say, yes, these are things that have already happened. But then the light bulb went off like, okay, but well, we still have three months left of the year. Right. So if we are speaking as if we are on January 1st, what do we want to write down that we want to be proud of that may not have happened yet? Yeah. And then also what what do we have that we can still accomplish? Yep. Because because again, we normally do when we do it, it's it's a day or two left in the, the year. The year had happened, right. right. So, so this, now we had 90 days to to kind of um strategize and add to um what we wanted to happen, which I really think we should continue to do it this oh, way. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We got so much, man, just behind the scenes stuff that has to happen that needs um, an amount of time. In order to, get, to accomplish right. it. This is not like we need two weeks. This yeah. stuff is six, seven, eight, nine months sometimes, you know? Yeah. So we're going to encourage y'all to ask yourself that question um, because asking ourselves that question without it being like at the culmination part of the year was so helpful, right? And what we did though is we looked and said, okay, so I have these three things that I put on the list mm -hmm. that haven't happened yet. So now what habits, like what does my life need to look like in order for that to happen? Yeah. Okay, so we sped it up and we said, okay, if it's January 2024, January 1st, 2024, what are you most proud of? And then we asked ourselves this game changer question. Do you remember it? Yeah, that was, um, what do you regret right. in 2023? Yeah. And what we realized is that we did not want to be at January 1st, 2023 with any regrets. 24. Or 2023 or 2024 yeah. with any regrets. And there was time now in order to change that. So then we wrote down like, OK, well, what do we want to change for this year? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of some takeaways, like huge takeaways that we got outside of the regrets because the regret. I think the regret is something that the way I would think about it or continue to think about it is something that's in the back of your mind that every day makes you do what needs to get done. Yes. So there's no regret, right? Yeah. And I was I was talking about this to my team um, not too long ago where, you know, for most people, most people, I'm not going to say all, but for most people, whatever, they have the same resolutions every year. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get in the gym. I'm going to start a business. I'm going to start singing. I'm going to make better friends. I'm going to, you know, but somewhere along the way, we have these big hopes about what we're going to do. But because we're not changing our habits, you end up with the same regret. So asking us ourselves the whole, because I don't think most people say, what do you regret until like you're at the end of something, right? Mm -hmm. So being able to see that I'm not the, at the end of it, but if I don't change anything right yeah. now, this will be a regret. It gave us some um, capacity to think about it differently and what we want to change. And I know for us, one thing that came out of it, we were like, you know what? We don't want to regret not initiating a prayer life together. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, I'm sitting there thinking too, something that I don't think we really talked about, but I do want us to like pick one thing a month. And maybe put on the bathroom mirror or something like that. Just just a like a big goal. Whatever that goal is, right? Just so we can see it every day, but it's a common goal. Oh, common. Okay, because I was gonna say I kinda do that. Well, but just, in my journal, like right. not together. But you you wanna you're saying that it would be it <laughs> here go a word that we talked about lately. It's something that we could do together, but it's also something that we can hold each other accountable for if yeah. we're looking at it every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I but I think it should change monthly. So it's kinda like the theme of the month, right? Okay. To make sure that that happens. Uh, or because so intentionality, man, is what I'm what I'm really learning, which is how how intentional are you focusing on X? Yeah. Right. And if it's not in front of you and we're talking about accountability partner, maybe that's something that we can be accountable for 
for each other every single day because A, we share the same bathroom, but B, we're looking at it and focusing on it every day. Yeah. No, I like that. The only thing that I would add, though, is we get to change it once we master it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if we haven't mastered or perfected, you know, perfected the thing, and yeah. not, not to say that we're going to do it perfectly, but you know what I'm saying? If we, and so we, it stays up until it becomes a habit. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So, so y'all, y'all even see like this, the way we, we're, we're talking, talking right now, right? right? This is the way it looks when we're talking through what we want to do. And one thing that we want to say is that, so this is where our quote unquote goal setting, um, mindset this is how it began this year because we wanted to think about okay what has gone well what are we really proud of because at the end of the year when you look up and you haven't hit your numbers you might be like oh man i'm trash right mm -hmm. but when you really take the time to say okay but honestly like i'm very proud i'm very i feel very great about the family time we spent this year i feel mm -hmm. very good about the relationships we're building i feel very good about you know we had successful eagle talk live the speed networking event, you know, we've hired our friends to come alongside us. So I feel very proud about a lot of things. And at the end of the day, there is definitely ebb and flow mm -hmm. in growth and in entrepreneurship, but we have to have that time to be reflective in order to figure out how to move forward. Yeah. I'm going to give a, a small piece of advice to those that are doing um, 2023 vision boards, mm -hmm. because I was in the media room last night and I was just looking at mine and thinking about what I want the next year to look like yeah is start thinking about it now first and don't make it easy because i was looking at it and it's just, it should it should feel a little bit out of reach yeah a little uncomfortable and you know you got to put in some work and some, and some time because i was looking at mine from last year a i was rushed so i wasn't really ready i didn't i didn't have a deep thought on what i wanted it to look like when i was looking at it last night i was like huh by mid-year i had hit got most of this stuff already out the way yeah and that to me means it was just too tangible it was too yeah it was yeah. too tangible yeah. and, and i love that you're saying that which kind of segues into a, an event an opportunity that we have for our eagle talk family is because i think that a lot of times people you know we oh this year this gonna be the year that i'm a millionaire okay but you still working at taco bell right. you know what I'm saying? or this gonna be the year that i'm getting healthy but we haven't researched a recipe to start eating clean right mm -hmm. So the part is like really thinking about it and having some intentionality and purpose behind it. Mm -hmm. And I know, and you know that a lot of people right now are just feeling really pressed and overwhelmed yeah. at the impending recession, which side note, y'all, we've been in a recession. Yeah. <laughs> um, and one thing that Corey and I were talking about, because a lot of folks, a lot of our friends, and we've shown our friends how we quote unquote goal set or set intentions for ourselves. So we're going to actually have a masterclass. Mm -hmm. where we're going to really break down our process and give you some tangible um, action steps so that you can not only have the best 2023 ever, but re recession proof your life. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's going to happen on January 5th, 2023. You can check out Eagle talk podcast.com forward slash masterclass to register for that. We only have a few seats left because we do want to limit the capacity because we want to make sure that um, that we have a form where we can have some dialogue and really go through uh, what the process looks like so that you're just not slapping other people's dreams that you got on a magazine on the vision board. And yeah. now you're feeling, you know, random when it's not happening. Yeah, the last thing uh, that I can say on this subject, going from this year to next year is a uh don't be discouraged yeah oh yeah don't be discouraged be and, and, and yeah, yeah yeah and b is is to be in, be encouraged <laughs> yeah, right be because encouraged. it's easy man it's easy to soak soak is the word right s-o-a-k s-u-l-k s-u-l-k okay yeah. it's easy to soak and and um i've noticed that when things are not going right on, on your timeline then people soak Oh, yeah. And we become overwhelmed, right? We get overwhelmed with, I tell realtors all this all the time on my um, podcast, Real Estate Bestie, you know, um, if you are listening to what media says, they will make you think there ain't nobody buying a house, yeah. right? Because of interest rates. Even though we have had to switch up our strategy, do we not believe in real estate and not believe in investing? No, we absolutely do, right? Mm -hmm. We bought our house that we currently live in at 7% interest rate. Yeah. And we so happy we did because we have doubled our equity, you know, in a short amount of time. So really protecting, it's one thing to protect your mindset, mm -hmm. but it's another thing to feed yourself 
with information and tools and strategy to get you to the next level. And quite honestly, y'all, when you really listen to a lot of um, thought leaders, a lot of business leaders, they are, uh, I mean, we don't want to see people suffer, but they are excited about the opportunities that these economic times will provide those who continue to dig. Yeah. So pretty much what she's saying is don't be scared of the power to pivot, right? The power um, and, of pivot. Yeah. Hey. In, in these times. And again, I, I've, I can go on and on about this, but I, I made another recent switch in my business, which was, OK, cool. Uh, I'm not buying a lot of stuff to hold for myself right now. I can focus a little bit more on consulting. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sitting people down. You know, I got four or five hours a week blocked off to talk to different individuals. And that's just a piece of the business that I wasn't working six months ago because I was so busy buying property. And let's say this, too. Um if they wanted to get in contact with you for consulting, mm-hmm. you want them to hit Eagle Talk page? Hit, hit Eagle Talk. Yeah, let it go through, yeah. Kim, because I don't want to hello. Get, yeah. Hello at EagleTalkPodcast.com. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm open, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm only doing about four or five people a week, but I will tell you this. You give me an hour or two of your time, by the time you're done with me, you're going to have all the tools you need to go out here and have a, a start a successful real estate career. Yeah, sure. and help minimize the mistakes. Yeah. 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 No, so this is good, y'all. I mean, just the idea of sometimes you you have to, you know, take account of like what has been, celebrate. I don't care who you are. If you are living, breathing, watching, or listening to this podcast, you have something to celebrate. 100%. Right? This year has not just been a watch. And it's been a hardest year of my life you know what i'm saying like hands down we've lost some really really close people my mother you know your Corey's fry brother it's been a hard year yeah but um sitting back to say but you know what what am i most proud of you know what a, and, and what do i need to tweak you know and a lot of what we're most proud of was not the number of dollars that were or were not in our bank account mm-hmm. it was you know taking time away with our boys or you know being able to entrepreneurship allowing me to hold my mom and you know writing a book about her so there's just so much to be grateful for and again on january 5th we just want to share with you a more holistic way to approach the new year yeah. um and not just the new year but really pursuing that life that, that you really want to live yeah so we still got great times among us even though a pending recession as you mentioned which is fine just look for the holes look for the holes try to solve a problem fill a void uh, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a great year. Yep, yes it is. All right, y'all. We'll see you next week. See y'all next time. Bye, y'all. Peace.